Hello, hello, and hello. This is uh, Prophet West coming to you this Wednesday. This Wednesday, and uh, it's been a few days. So uh, I want to greet you in the name of the Lord, and I hope everybody is doing real good today. Um, bear in mind, on tomorrow at 8.45, actually, uh, I'm going to be running a little late tomorrow. I will I come back and, and give you the time on when I will do my broadcast tomorrow. Normally, it's 8.45. Tomorrow, it may be 9.30 or so. I still have a few doctor's appointments with my son, Daniel. But I want to briefly, if I can, just something briefly, I just, just into my spirit. And I just want to get you to see it and get you to see the fight that you're in. And um, when you trust God and when you're getting close to your destination or your journey or your promise or what you're having faith for, what you're believing for, you will always, when you get close to it, when you're getting close to your promise, when you're getting close to what God in your spirit, and you can start to see it coming to fruition on what God has said, your faith is going to get uh, become under attack. Meaning that anything that doesn't look like faith is going to begin to talk to you. Anything that doesn't look like faith is going to begin to tell you, you know that's not true. You know it's not going to happen. And I'm going to tell you another thing that the devil, the adversary, in this season right now, many believers, you're under attack. And one of the attacks that he's going to talk, he's going to talk to your mind, he's going to try to twist words in your head. And one of the things he's going to try to do, he's going to try to generalize things. He's going to try to generalize your, your faith. He's going to try to generalize how you believe. Don't never let the, the, the devil or the adversary try to generalize or who the devil is in your faith. If you believe God that God's going to hear you tomorrow, stay right there and believe it. Uh, and see what, what the, the devil will do, the adversary will do. He will come and try to reason with you, try to generalize. Well, uh, it might not be tomorrow, but it's going to happen, but it may not be tomorrow. You know, it, it might take a little longer and, and you don't know when, uh, God is going to heal. You don't know when God's going to give you a promise. Yeah, you do know when God, if God speak it to you, you do know the, the faith says faith, faith is the fact that, you know, faith says I'm healed. Faith says it's going to happen exactly just like God said it's going to happen. Faith says is that that way, just like with my son. Oftentimes you got some people that say, well, uh, you know, you don't know how he's going to be healed. You don't know how long it's going to take and you're going to know how and this and that. Yes, I do. Cause God said he's healed. And so don't generalize what God has already said. Don't generalize your opinions based on what God has said in the word, the fact. So see God's faith is fact. Faith is fact spiritually. Faith is fact. It's so it's, it's what God says in heaven. Anytime you have faith, you have God's faith. God's faith is, is already so heaven. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, prosperity, healing, uh, the fullness of joy, the promises, everything that you can want and desire is in your faith. It's already so in your faith. And so the transition we have to get through is from what we see. See, because what we see, which is doubt, oftentimes when you live in the flesh, is going to attack what you believe is going to attack what God has said into your spirit, what you see, what you see in the spirit. See, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Hope for and evidence of not seen. It's evident, but you can't see it. And what, what, what Paul was talking about was naturally. You can't see it naturally. But faith is a spiritual walk. Faith is says that God, I believe you. And the moment that you believe God, it grows or your belief or your vision in what you believe grows when you're in troubles and when you're in tough times, when you don't waver, actually your eyes or your focus or your faith grows, it stretches. Anytime you want your, your faith to grow, your faith grows through it being challenged. Your faith grows through you being under a, some type of tack, some type of thing where it looks like it's not going to happen. Anytime you, anytime you believe God is not going to look like it's going to happen. Anytime you have faith of God, your mind and everything naturally so is going to say it's not going to happen. So that's when faith is, faith is, it stands by itself in the earth. Faith says, faith is going against the current. It's almost like when, when a dam is broken and, and the current is going in a certain direction. Faith is going against that direction, against that current, and it's going back up where things broken. Faith is a lonely walk. Faith doesn't feel good. And, there's, and faith comes from being faithful.
Faithfulness is a consistently believing God constantly, constantly, constantly over the same thing, over the same thing, over the same hope, over the same desire. Then what you did, what you get then, then you become faithful. Your faith grows, you become, you become, or you get in a relationship with faith. The more you have faith, the more you become intimate with faith. Just like in a relationship naturally. So with my wife, the more I spend time with my wife, the more I talk to my wife, the more uh, my confidence in her grow, the more her confidence in me grow. And the more at a certain point in time, wherein she don't have to be around. But if someone says something to my wife or about my wife, I can say it. She didn't say it <coughs> because because I know her faith, because I trust her, because I know her spirit. The same thing true with God and faith. The more you intimate with God, the more you become intimate with faith. And then the more you see as God, the more you feel as God, the more you think as God, and the more you respond as God, then what will happen, you will block out things that are not of God, like doubt. Doubt things that people say, well, you know, God can heal, but no, you, you eliminate those things. See, because in the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus, he couldn't work many miracles, or he didn't work miracle miracles where there was doubt. Where there was unbelief. So if you're around people that don't have faith, don't have doubt, separate yourself from that because there has to be an agreement of God's word and the person that you're with, the person that you're believing with. If the person that you're believing with don't believe God with you, then you must separate from them or it's going to hurt your faith. It's going to hurt production from taking place so but what you have to do you have to separate yourself and remove remove yourself from everybody whether it's family members or not who don't believe like you believe because the Bible says, how can two people walk together except they be in agreement if a person or a people not agreeing with you they don't believe in your cause so you have to separate yourself even when you're with someone or with people and they don't believe as you you have to separate yourself and not entertain or listen to them not talk to them don't spend time with them don't have a relationship with them don't have a conversation with them. And then what you're doing, your faith is growing. And then they can't distract your faith. That's what the devil does. He comes to distract your faith. He don't want you to keep looking at what God said. But he wants you to look to the left or the right. <coughs> and what man saying. What the doctor saying. What your body saying. What physical things are saying. Like, I, <coughs> like I've always said, there's a difference between a, f a fact and a truth, a fact might be that you might be sick in your body. A fact might be you might be hurt. A fact might be you might be in the valley of decision. Or a fact might be you might be in a bad situation, relational, and you might be headed to divorce court. But the truth is, his name is Jesus. And the Bible said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. The Bible also says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In other words, you will be delivered. So it's not a thing of figured out, but it's a matter of believing God. The more you believe God... Then it's going to happen. Faith. <coughs> Faith says it's so. Faith says it's going to take place. Faith says it's done in heaven. And so what I'm doing and what you need to do, stay focused on your faith. Because at this place in your life, your faith is under attack, meaning that people in situations, adversary, the prince of Persia, want you, the adversary, he wants you not to believe in God. He wants you to lose your focus. And losing your focus is losing your faith. That means to dilute your faith with doubt. Or dilute your faith with reason and saying, maybe not so fast. Maybe it won't happen today. But never equate or compare your faith <coughs> and your belief based on someone else. Base your faith <coughs> based on what God's word is said. God said, God said, Jesus said, by his stripes we're healed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Uh, if, you, if you decree a thing, I hasten to perform it. So God said, if you open up your mouth and you decree it. If you declare it as being so in truth, God said he's going to make it, he's going to perform it. So faith is declaring what's so, declaring what you believe, declaring what God has spoken to your spirit. And when you declare what God has spoken into your spirit, God is going to hasten and he's going to make it come to pass. God bless you. Have a good day.